So thank you everyone for coming back to my channel. Name is Sean Toby. This is Promoting Safety Engineering. And uh, thanks for taking out the time to be here. And uh, today, of course, um, I'm going to talk about uh, fire and gas detection. Now, of course, uh, this is a channel where we talk everything about process safety. And I think uh, I've I want to start a series or this is like a series. The first one was just talking about process safety. And now this is one of the first, um, should I say, logically thinking, not design wise, but logically thinking this is one of the first places to start because after your gas detect your fire and gas detection when you detect something is happening what what happens next if there's a fire it goes to the fire um, it goes to the firefighting system and then if the firefighting system can or after firefighting then comes um mitigative um things like um emergency response evacuation and stuff like that so i just wanted to, to start from here and I want to talk about the various types of fire and gas detection. And what I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to explain the um, types of gas detectors, fire, um, fire detect, flame detectors, heat detectors. I'm going to define them, explain how they operate and how they're used on layouts in a design sense. So like when you're doing your design or you're updating your design, or it's, it could be a greenfield uh, first a first time design or brownfield when you're updating them. How to apply them on layouts because I know there's some mysticism about it. How to say, okay, this is a heat detector. Where do we put it? This is a flame detector. Where do we put it? And I want to give a general idea of how those, those things work. Also, bear in mind that um, especially for this, when you're getting especially to the DED, that's the detailed engineering phase, when you are almost um, just before um, construction and stuff, com construction, you, if you are doing it, if you are doing the um, gas detection for that, for that um, phase, it would be better if you've, if you've done your um, gas dispersion, dispersion studies but if you're still in feed, that's the front end engineering design, then you can, which is just to kind of have an idea of the cost, you can be a bit more flexible and put stuff a bit around. So now I'm going to talk about these are the main types we use in oil and gas, or generally, these are the main types we use heat detectors. And they are very different from flame detectors. There's heat detection, there's flame detection, there's gas detec detection gas gas detectors and it's also different from smoke detectors and manual alarm call points and then audio audible and visible visual alarms these are like the gen general types we use and it's um good to have a general idea of how they are used and where they are where they are placed in, in the facility and on your layouts because that's where you actually, in a design sense, that's where you actually see them on the layouts and then when you eventually end up in the facility. So how do you place them? So I just want to give a general idea of that. But it's always good to have your FERA done, which is your fire and explosion risk assessment and your gas dispersion study done before going into this. But if you're in feed where and you don't have those documents, it's still okay to go ahead and do this and you can just um, place them around. So, of course, um, I'll start with the first on the list, heat detectors. Please, before I go too far, don't forget to like the video and subscribe. I know, I know I'm sounding like a broken record, but thanks. So the first type is um, fusible plugs. And fusible plugs, um, they are like one of the really cheap um, heat detectors. It's a type of heat detection. And what is it really? I, I put a definition there. It's a threaded metal cylinder, like uh, gun metal, and with a hole drilled in it. That's like this kind of hole. And that hole is filled with another kind of metal, a low melting point metal, maybe like 100, um, 100 150 um, degrees centigrade. And um, so the way it works is this is put 
in where the, you, you suspect that there's going to be a lot of heat. And when this melts out, this, the, this has a very high melting point. So it wouldn't melt the outer body. That's the gun metal. And the inner, the inner, the inner, um, the metal that is put in inside it has a lower melting point than the outer metal so that when there's a lot of heat this one in the middle melts and flows out and this is what triggers the alarm and lets you know that something is something has gone amiss it's connected to a panel that can sense what's happening in here so it's very very cheap it's used on and the use cases are on well heads compressor systems process generally process areas where you expect some good amount of heats but uh, you pl place them close to the engines there once it's um once it the, the, met, the metal melts out that's the scene inside that um allows that tin is sometimes used as the fusible alloy that's what's inside here that now triggers your alarm so um of, uh, so that's how fusible plugs operate then you have what you call oh, before i go much further uh, let me show some pictures of fusible plugs because i had some pictures here okay so this is like a more detailed um should i say drawing of what it is like there's the inner solid copper plug fusible metal that's this, this gun metal body gun metal body all around and this is what kind of melts out of it so that's um a little fusible plug for you yeah and on the drawing it could hmm, do i have it on any of my drawings so this is a layout this is where you would eventually expect it to be placed on maybe this is a compressor or some engine of some sort you can put it on here that is for your drawing you can place them around on top here and you get put it up in your legend it's not on this my drawing i just cooked this up pretty quickly but you can have it somewhere here 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 around so that i'm just clicking them so that they, they show places like that so that and they are really cheap so you can have like three here you can have like three here three here three here and then they all tie all in, tie up into the f and g panel that's f anytime you hear me say f and g i'm talking of fire and gas so that's kind of how the fusible plugs are used and then um the next on the list is this that's your linear heat detectors now linear heat detectors they are very very good for long distances like if you want to cover a long um like linear distance they are very very useful so i can ex um let me just read out the uh, the, exp uh, the definition it's linear heat detection cables combine advanced polymer that's all this in ads and digital technologies that can detect heat conditions anywhere along the length of the cable so once the polymer melts, the conductors initiate contact with one another and communicate with the control panel to sound alarms or activate suppressing systems. So it's it could be used for let's say up to a kilometer distance. And so anywhere on the wire or anywhere on the entire cable that you have heat uh, it reaches a certain temperature it automatically triggers an alarm so that is very very useful because it's not just on one spot one spot one spot it's um cost effective it's really um you can use it for i don't um for up to a kilometer so it can detect a fire anywhere along the length of the cable and can be of length in excess of a kilometer in it initiates alarms once its temperature is reached along any part of the cable so an alarm will go off once that set temperature has been reached anywhere on the length of the cable so it's very useful especially in floating roof, roof storage tanks those large tank farms you see it's very useful then in gas storage areas so i want to show you um what that is like so okay you have something like this which is uh which is a, a spherical vessel or a storage tank so these are the cables around it around it around it so anywhere around this cable that there's a lot of heat it will pick it up and send it to this f and g panel so it's very very useful for so something this big you just have a really long lens wrapped around it and all tying up into the panel 
it's very useful in that sense so this is like a floating roof tank it will be all around this roof everywhere around and anywhere there's a hot spot it will pick it up and send it to the panel so uh, of course you know floating roof tanks the um, based on how much oil it's pumped in the roofs could go up and they could come down and then this is constantly connected to this the panel which when and there's any heat so in case the oil in here catches fire this will pick it up and send send the message to the alarm and then you have foam being poured in there to um, take out the fire okay so this is kind of what it looks like inside steel conductors in there protective tape to wrap around it the outer jackets and the heat sensitive polymer that's what at once it melts it's alerts um the panel to initiate the alarm so this this is also like a real life example of it you can see it's all around all around wrapped 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 around so anywhere there's a lot of heat around these wires it would send a message this is very very key in oil and gas unless you you don't want because you cannot be everywhere in the facility your cctv cannot co cover everywhere even just this vessel you cannot cover everything so you need fire and gas detection it's very very critical that's like one of your first lines of defense that's what tells you something has gone wrong because immediately this picks up the excess heat it's in it initiates an alarm in the control room and everyone knows that something something is up this is also another picture of a floating roof or it, it's a tank farm and that is a linear heat detector running ar um, running around it okay so uh, let me take this down do i have any more picture okay so this is also a tank farm very good very good so you have it running everywhere around the length of the roof the circumference of the roof you have it running every that those linear heat detectors because you can't have detector here detector here detector here detector here or a feasible plug here feasible plug here feasible plug here that doesn't make sense just run the cable around and it will tell you when there's something amiss very useful very very useful form of detection and uh, then uh, i think i should have one more in here which is okay this is kind of just what it looks like but yeah we are okay with that and now uh, yeah so of course sorry <laughs> i should have talked about this earlier and this is like kind of on a vessel where you would put a fusible plug so that is um this is like the location of a fusible plug you can have it here 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 just to make sure that that fusible plug is for heat don't forget and um, it's different from the uh, linear heat detector the uh, linear heat detectors so that's it on linear heat detectors and then we would go to so i i explained that it should be on storage tanks gas storage areas or any lens that you want to um, have an idea of if something is going amiss then yeah i said i would explain how it's used on layouts so because in your design the layout is where you actually start a kind of um your design starts from where you it shows up so there's going to be a plain layout as a safety engineer you're given a plain layout and they tell you okay turn this into a f uh, fire and um, gas detection layout and you'd have to decide where those things go and i said it's good to have your ferra that's your fire and explosion risk assessment so this is uh, these are tank farms on a layout this is a layout so these are linear heat detectors on the layouts on tank farms these are the tank farms and these are the linear heat detectors on them this is how they are you can come up with your own legend there are no hard and fast rules this is the legend for linear heat detector detectors and that's it that you are seeing you can see it in this um you can see it on the tank farms here and you can also see it in this gas um storage area this, uh, this is a gas storage area this is the linear heat detector so that's how they are used on layouts now we go back to what's the next we're looking at 
rate of rise um, detectors. Now, these detectors are very useful in places that's the rate of rise. They are very useful in places that are normally hot. The temperature there is hot. I'm not talking of um, like in the desert. I'm talking of like in an engine or in a compressor where it's already like over 100 degrees centigrade. How do you can you tell that there's a fire in such a place? Because the normal operating temperature is already over 100 degrees centigrade. How do you want to tell? You use a, heat, a, a rate of rise because this kind of um, heat detectors immediately can tell when the temperature is escalating very quickly. They measure the time between the temperature differences and that immediately lets you know that there's something wrong inside this engine because if a fusible plug is inside that engine it would automatically trigger on normal because it's already hot or if you have your linear heat detectors there those would trigger be triggered of normally but the rate of rise will not get triggered unless where is normally hot the temperature starts going even higher very quickly so i'll just give you the definition rate of rise operates on a rapid rise in temperature at the sensor sensor of nine degrees centigrade or more per minute so if the temperature is increasing at nine degrees centigrade every minute this activates the rate of rate of rise feature irrespective of the starting temperature so the starting temperature might have been 150 degrees centigrade but when it starts going much higher than that quickly very rapidly then you know something is amiss this closes the contacts in the sensor to transmit the alarm condition to the fire alarm control panel when the rate of rise element alone has been activated, the sensor is self-restoring. So once it picks it up, it goes back to its normal temperature. So, um, okay, let me pull, I was on rate of rise. So use cases used in areas where the ambient temperature is high and where temperature variation can occur in normal operating. Or in, in normal operating conditions in order to have more reliable heat detection while avoiding false alarms so somewhere like a turbine engine enclosure you can use it there so that's also can be used like um where i said your fusible plugs can be but it's going to be in in almost like inside the turbine enclosure where is normal where it, the heat is all is always very high you would have it in there you won't have it on stuff like vessels and that kind of stuff you would have it where it's normally very very hot i don't think i have any here but we we see them around a lot but you can just place them inside of course on a layout you can't exactly say this would be what what you would use would be your notes because you could have fusible plugs here and you would have that um and you'd have your and you would have your um, what's it called your rate of rise also here but on your notes you would say maybe notes one rate of rise should be in engine enclosure notes two the fusible plugs should be on the body of this and this and that so that's how you would differentiate where they they are supposed to be because this is not a 3d drawing so that's that on rate of rise very very useful for places where the, the temperature is normally very high okay then um this is now we go to flame detectors now the thing is don't get confused about heat detectors and flame detectors because we use all of them in in, in uh, should i say in a combination uh, uh, com uh, it's all a combined effort because we want to have we, we don't want spurious strips a lot of these um detectors there there's what we call voting um one out of two two out of two two out of three so something like fusible plugs now we don't a fusible plug might go off might initiate an alarm if it's just one but it may not be a real fire scenario it might be something off just happened a one-off and then you have the alarm going off everyone's getting worried so you they, they have voting um should i say mechanisms that two have to go off before the alarm goes off if one goes off it doesn't initiate anything or it might just initiate a very low alarm and then but when two go off that means this is confirmed fire detection so now um, we go to flame detectors and flame detectors um so we we're through with heat detection and now we're on flame detector 
so this deals with actual fire this is not heat this is real fire you're gonna and what there are two types mainly there's ultraviolet and there are infrared there's infrared so it's like a camera more or less it's like a camera that sees heat um heat waves heat sensors you know like you see in the movies so the ultraviolet works by detecting the radiation emitted by a flame they are capable of detecting explosions and fires within four milliseconds so they are really fast much faster than the heat um heat detectors with a time delay of three to four seconds to minimize false alarms that can be triggered by other ultraviolet sources like sunlight nighting radiation and aqua holding. so can you see, because they are like cameras so other things can trigger them so that's why you also need your voting logic and then you have your infrared infrared flame sensors are designed to work with infrared spectral band when an explosion occurs certain hot gases will emit patterns in the infrared region which can then be analyzed using a specialized thermal imaging camera so these are kind of what they're like flame detectors they're like cameras you install them um, in strategic positions also you can have them with voting logic two out of two two out of three uh to uh, on confirmed fire so uh, let me go back to my um drawings and they have a should i say a field of view so that's um flame detectors they have a should i say a field where they can where they can actually see so this is a flame detector like you saw on the other drawing and this is kind of like the view so of course like a camera a camera cannot see everywhere it cannot see the, um, six, um, 360 degrees so this is like a 90 degree view it would have i think this 45 to 0 45 to 0 yeah so that's about or uh, slightly more than 45 so this would be about um maybe um one one um i'm not sure maybe 110 degree view so you have to be careful that you position them rightly that why i i uh, i put this there is so that you know that they have to be very well positioned so that they can pick up whatever is going wrong on time and this is kind of like a flame detector here seeing this although the picture is really tiny um let me pull this out of the way okay uh this is something like also um what you can like this is 60 this is 60 so that's about 120 sorry yeah that's about 120 view so that's kind of like what you can see and then this is these are more pictures of flame detectors i put them up here so that you know that okay these things are seen stuff and they are just hanging in good places i'll also show you on the layout um, this is a flame detector, flame detector. They just place them in strategic positions to do their jobs. And um, where, where is the layout? Okay, so let me look for. So on this layout now, this is a flame detector here. That's what I made the legend, I think. Yeah, flame detector. I said, okay, 10 flame detectors. So you can see I've put the arc here of where it covers. This is a 120 degree arc this line here and this line here you can see this line and then that is the arc i put it so that you know that it can cover this area depending on the size of this area it would have and i based on the type you want to use but generally they would see that 120 degree view and then you would have also it's good to have two or three over an area so that you don't have spurious um, alarms so uh you can see a couple other here this is another one this is another one although i didn't show the arc of this this ones this is this and this are covering can you see this one here and this one here they are covering this and this one here and this one here they are both covering this and this one here and this one here they are both covering this this one here and this one here are both covering this you want to because you you want to have make sure that they are as focused as possible and tag them rightly so that when one goes off it's connected to an alarm that tells you exactly where the location it goes off is so that um it, because if 
they are all connected to one panel that doesn't really differentiate them if a fire starts here and the fire is small but these two pick it up and you come here and you are thinking it's here you can't exactly pinpoint unless you know the detector that went off so it's always good to have enough around and have them well tagged so you know which is um, and also reflecting that in the control room so that you know where exactly um, there's an issue okay so that's that on flame detectors there are two types as i said mainly um, ultraviolet and infrared flame detectors then we'll go to smoke detectors smoke detectors they are mainly used indoors because um, and I'm sure you've seen them at your at home and they are indoors in most places. You see them in your offices and stuff. Smoke detectors are very good because they are one of like if you're sleeping or if you're if there are people in the office that don't know that there's a fire immediately and it picks it up immediately. Everyone, uh, everyone knows it emits a very loud, shrill noise. So they are very good for to detect fires indoors or at least smoke because a lot of times when there are fires, sometimes the fire doesn't even is not what kills the people. Sometimes it's just smoke inhalation. So it's always very good to pick them up. So smoke detectors are generally not to be used in the open air. Smoke detectors are employ employed in closed areas only. Smoke detectors are sensitive to fog. Two types of smoke detectors may be used. Ionizing, photoelectric. Then there's the Vesta. It's very, very sensitive. It has a fan that pulls in whatever um, is um, whatever air is around. And if there's smoke in it, it would immediately let you know. It operates with a light flashing through, um, through should I say, the air. To, and it kind of detects it based on the way the light bounces around uh, it's scattered with if there's smoke in it the light will be scattered if there's no smoke it wouldn't be scattered that's kind of how it works also remember ionizing is not used in oil and gas ionizing smoke detectors they are not used in oil and gas now let me go to my um okay do i have pictures of smoke detectors i'm not sure mm. okay i i yes okay i so i Let's smoke. Okay. 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 Yeah. There's just a few pictures of smoke detection. Yes. Yes. The smoke detectors. You, of course, you know them. You see them at home every day. Now, okay. Let me go to the layout and give you an example of where there's. Okay. So these are smoke detectors. One, two, three. This is indoors. You would see it on the legend smoke detector. There are five in here. So. So and you can always see here, detectors positions are indicative locations. Fire and gas mapping is required to confirm actual position of detectors. So you do your F and G mapping, which is very, very key, especially when you are getting to the const um, end of your DED, your detailed design, and um, you're, you're going into construction. It's always good to do your fire and gas mapping. You do your fire and gas dispersion analysis. You do your fire and explosion risk assessments. So, and it's through those things. You can do it like this, but it's those documents, your fire and explosion risk assessments, your fire, your gas dispersion analysis. That kind of tells you how the gas would move if there's, um, if there's a leak. or tells you where the heat would be if there's a fire and that's what kind of also guides where you place it but this is very okay for feed if you're in the feed stage or if you don't have a company that's gonna work on doing uh, mapping for you okay so now we're going to flammable gas detectors and one of the first types and interesting types I like is the line of sight, open path. So the way this works is there is a transmitter and there's a receiver and it shoots an infrared beam across a long distance, probably about 200 meters. And any gas that passes across that infrared beam, is, it's, it's going to trigger the alarm. So it's, should I say it's like a guard, it's like a gate, it's, you can't see it. If you walk across it, you wouldn't know, but once a gas passes across, it picks it up and lets you know that something is wrong. So these detectors measure the amount of hydrocarbon gas in an infrared beam 
by determining the amount of infrared absorption of the air or air and gas mixture in the line of sight path. A beam of infrared energy is emitted between a source and a detector, so there are two, which measures the intensity of the infrared beam at the detector, and any attenuation caused by hydrocarbons in the beam is electronically processed to give a lower, um, is, is it LEL, limit. The most reliable basis for open path gas detection is up, up to 200 meters. And there are also infrared um, points type detectors. Those are not um, the, um, the, the, should I say, receiver, transmitter and receiver. No, those are just on one point. I will still go into that. So, but the thing is, this kind of detectors, they mainly detect one type of gas, um, not a combination. They are not really good at um, when there's methane mixed with ethane mixed with propane, which you see a lot of in oil and gas, it wouldn't really detect that. So the gases it detects, methane, ethane, propane, butane, pentane, and the list goes on. So the unit is ideal for open areas without obstructions. So of course you have to put that at the back of your mind. There shouldn't be any obstructions because it's going to affect how it operates as the beam must have a clear path. Covers large areas, thus minimizing the number of units required. That's very good. It's very economical, very fast response, limited maintenance required. But the disadvantages are it's unsuitable for hydrocarbons, which have various compositions. If one day the leak could be methane and the next propane, the readings will change and will not be representative. Cannot measure non-hydrocarbons, e.g. hydrogen. So this a very, very useful, but... Um, of course it has its limitations but remember this is for gas detection and i let me show you how um okay let me go to gas detection and um where's gas line of sight gas detector so it's kind of like a it's kind of like uh should i say camera but it actually shoots out a beam this is it's in all its awesome glory and then this is kind of there would be another one down here which is picking up the signal and the one that shoots out so there's a transmitter and a receiver and these are all vessels this is a very good explanation so if any of these vessels has a leak that passes through the beam we can't see the beam but once it passes through it would alert that there's something wrong and this might have been placed low because it's a dense gas so it drops if it's a very light gas it might have been placed higher so that if the gas is um, um, dispersing upwards it would pick it up so this is kind of how it is and then on your layout this is kind of what it looks like of course I said it earlier on you can um, of course be creative with your legend so this is it i put in the legend this is um, infrared linear gas detectors um, ir and that is it shooting its beam out of here the um, the dotted line all the way to here and that's the receiver so it just shoots it across so any gas that goes that wants to pass anywhere here it will pick it up and the same for this side too there's another one here so it's like a gate here and a gate here so that nothing can go across very very useful very useful then um, of course let's uh, go back so that's on your line of sight or open path detectors then we have your flammable gas detectors these are points your points type these ones they stay on one position you install them at a particular position and they don't move around or um or or they don't shoot beams across so this is very critical to do your um gas dispersion analysis you can do that with fast you can do it with fred there's lots of softwares to do that it's kind of models how the gas would travel in the air you factor in your uh, your wind direction how your wind speed and you factor in your how heavy the gas is how dense the gas is there are softwares to do that for you so it kind of gives you an idea of where the gas would flow on the um on the facility and there you use that to place the detectors so points because this just stay on one position 
point combustible that as is a flammable gas detector are used to monitor the presence of flammable levels of hydrocarbon gas or vapor in industrial environments such as refined chemicals. They are therefore located at several dozen sites to monitor for gas leaks. So you have them all scattered around. They are very useful. Uh, um, there are four types, catalytic combustion, electrochemical, infrared, ionization. So I remember I talked, said it earlier on that there are infrared types. Now let's go to the pictures and um, point gas detector. So this is point gas detector. Just have it on the fact this is what they look like. They are installed on uh, in areas around um, the site. This is another one. They are very, very useful. Very, very useful. Okay, that last one was a toxic. And on your layouts, you, you would see them here. Um, you can see them with the tiny G on it, gas G point gas detector that's this that's this that's this depending you can have them scattered around based on how your gas would flow and even if um your comp whatever company you are doing your design for they would have like an idea of how many around those areas and you you should have around the compressor how many you should have around the vessel and you put them on those points and then also um as i said earlier on don't forget you should try to do your ex um gas dispersion analysis so is there any gas detector here yeah points gas detector okay six point flammable gas detector that's um this this is one this is another one based on whatever is happening in here is why you put it in here because it's an enclosed place also even outside it has to do with the equipment around you can't just put stuff anywhere it has more to do with what kind of equipment you have around so also there's the toxic gas detectors or hydrogen gas detectors i didn't want to talk too much on this because um it depends i'm um, looking more at oil and gas what we really have as toxic in oil and gas is h2s that's hydrogen uh, sulfide gas that's is very common especially where they have sour crude you have your uh, toxic gas detectors then also you can have your hydrogen gas detectors these are very very good for battery rooms where you have batteries like your ups rooms where um, for power or uninterrupted power supply you need your because there are lots of batteries their batteries emit hydrogen at times and hydrogen could be very very should i say explosive so you would need your like if you go to this drone you would see that this is a battery room and you have hydrogen detectors there probably the batteries are around this area or maybe the wind blows this a through this area you would want your um, hydrogen gas detectors around there remember this are only indicative also and then if you have h2s around you should have your toxic gas detectors and these are hydrogen hydrogen where's the legend yeah hydrogen gas detector and two yeah so that's i think that's about all on gas detection okay yeah there's still one more portable gas detectors now these are the ones that the personnel on sites carry around when they are doing their um, daily activities portable gas detectors refer to gas detectors which are worn or carried by an individual typically battery operated you recharge them portable monitors are used for toxic or combustible gas detection as well as oxygen deficiency monitoring you they are very good like if you are doing some um vessel work like you are climbing into a vessel which um um there might be some oxygen deficiency or there may be some gas in there you it's good to have it on you because once it sends you because you enter into some vessels to do some maintenance work confined space and there are pockets of gas and they don't you can't you, you might have tried flushing it out but when you move around and your legs hit some stuff those gases come out and it will be very good if you have your detectors on you you pick it up immediately and and run out because you could get suffocated so also gas detectors use a sensor to measure the concentration of um particular gases in the atmosphere the sensor serves as a reference point and scale producing a measurable electric current when a chemical reaction caused by a specific gas occurs the sensor will monitor these currents and alarm the user in the presence of 
gas approaches and amount that is hazardous so they are very useful portable gas detections you just carry them around on the facility let me look for pictures okay yeah so this is kind of what they are like hey where's my picture i think i have to oh i have so many up So this is your gas detector, your portable gas detector also. This is where you, um, you put in to absorb the gas. If you breathe into it, uh, showing there's a lot of carbon, um, carbon dioxide, you breathe into it, it's good. You could also set it off. I remember we used to play with it then. So you can see this guy, he has it on him. That's it on, on his pocket. That's a portable gas detector in his pocket. And this is someone else also this is it on him you want to make sure you always have it on you when you are moving around the facility just in case there's a gas leak and yeah so that is that on portable gas detectors and then we go to manual alarm call points of course everyone knows what this is you see them in buildings you you see them everywhere and this is just if you as a person notice that there's a fire or some or you need to raise an alarm you just go break the glass press the button and every and an alarm goes off and you place them let me not say everywhere but almost everywhere manual call points are designed for purpose of raising an alarm manually once verification of a fire or emergency condition exists by operating the push button or break glass the alarm can be raised this um on my layouts they see them a lot uh, they are called max manual alarm call points okay here we have two um where are they okay this is one mac probably it's good to have them at doors entrances or on staircases this is another one this is the way into this um, area so it's good to have them because that's where people are going to run out of on the escape routes and all that it's good to have them there to alert everyone uh, let me also look at the there should also be some in this drawing yeah this is it's manual call points mcp mcp it's at the door okay it's here also this is another door it's here also this is another door you need them scattered around that's your manual call points let me look for the pictures also max that's what we call them yeah of course i'm sure you've seen a lot of them uh, everywhere this is another one so it's on the on the staircase and this is another one yeah and then we have what's next um i think this is the last we have your alarms so this is what actually tells everyone what's going on and alarms there are a million and one types you can uh, but most importantly there are audio and uh, audible and visible alarms so for places where there's a lot of noise where you have compressors operating people might not hear the alarms so you want these lights different colors to really really flash there so that if you're if the place is a really noisy environment or you have your earmuffs on you can actually see the alarms flashing and then you can get out of the place so these are um, audio and visual alarms. Do I have a picture on those? I don't. I don't know. But yeah, I think we all have an idea of what they are, and there should be a lot of them scattered around the facility because anywhere there could be people, you need them there so that um, they alert you to um, that they alert you to the awareness that something is wrong. And these are kind of how they are denoted on the drawings they are always uh, kind of um, outside so that uh, people can actually see them some are inside too but yeah so that's it on alarms and um, I think that's the end of the presentation so everyone thank you very much for watching the video this is promoting safety engineering again don't forget to like the video subscribe and I would continue this series. I would go further and explain more a uh, bit on firefighting because this is the first line. This is what picks it up and initiates your alarms. And it starts off your firefighting system, your fire suppression system, your fire water system, your fire water pump. This is what actually initiates them. And, uh, and 
you yeah you keep your facility safe that way so this is what starts those i would go into explaining your fire your um f how to have the fires are handled after this picks it up also it helps you with your shutdown when this pick um up a fire most times the plant has to be shut down or especially if it's close to the process areas you have um, you have an automatic shutdown depressurization so that's um, just to keep the plant safe so thank you everyone once again for watching the video do have a lovely day thank you have a nice day bye